Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobo Man. Welcome to another session for Help Desk Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, and Desktop Support Training. In this series that I'm creating, I have trouble tickets that come through the system and we work them together, fix them, and I also go into extensive explanations on how to go about it. So it's not just a simple fix and move on, but also talk about proactive things that you can learn from and actually expand your knowledge on. So this is really good video for those especially who are looking to get into help desk for the first time as well. All right, guys, if you got one second, please click the like button and if possible, share the video as well. I really appreciate it. It really means a lot to me. All right, let's get right into it. And we're going to work the first ticket here that says can't, cannot add a printer. And it just says error dot dot dot. And this issue is coming from our friend Mike Moser. If you're familiar with my video series, you know that Mike Moser has a lot of computer issues. So we're going to work that work his ticket again. Uh, and he says here, when I tried to add a printer, I get attached error. So let's see what this error is. And here we go. It's a big error. It says Windows can't open add printer. The local print spooler service is not running. Please restart the spooler or restart the machine. So I know that a lot of you who are watching this, who already know a lot of things about help desk, you probably learn about print spooler service. What that means usually is that you can't add a printer because the service has been stopped. And yes, you can simply enable the service. But why does this error come up to begin with? The reason for it usually is if a company decides to put restrictions on using the printer or adding the printer to certain users, to certain groups within the company. The reason for that is security. They don't want you to just necessarily add a printer and start to print secure stuff that belongs to the company. For example, account numbers, uh, personal information, all of that stuff is a security risk unless you have a type of job within that company that requires you to do this. So printing is usually very restricted in a lot of organizations and this is the error that you would get when you try to add a printer. So let's see what that looks like. Devices printers and scanners devices man they have so many different ways of getting to this point within windows 10 before it used to be simple you just go to add a new device or something like that so here is our printers and scanners in windows 10 so if we click add a printer and um, it's gonna what it does right now it just kind of looks for a available printer that's available on the network or locally if there is nothing there and if you're installing it for the first time, chances are nothing will come up. You may get a list of network printers that are available, but the chances are it may not be something that's right next to you. So let's say you work for a company that has, you know, two large buildings. Let's say it's just one building and there are three different floors and all of those floors have all together have 10 different printers. You will get a list of 10 different printers. And if they're not labeled correctly, you won't necessarily be able to add a correct printer. You don't want to add a printer when you work on first floor, uh, but you add a printer that's on a third floor. You know, that doesn't make sense. So what usually happens, and this time nothing came up because there, there are no network printers added or visible, at least. Uh, we have to click uh, the printer that I wasn't that I want isn't listed. And this is what happens. Otherwise, you would get a classic Windows uh, pop up where it lets you add a printer and this is what Mike is getting Windows can't open add printer so we know it's the print services or print spooler service that is not running so we know that we have to go in and enable it and that's perfectly fine but there is something that I really want you to keep in mind there are two different types of services if you go to your task manager the very last tab is services, right? These are the services. But there is another section here where it says open services. And this one is different from the services in Task Manager. It's completely different. So you're wondering, well, why? What do you mean? They're both named services. So what's the difference? First difference that you visually see is you can see that there are things listed on the left side here and that are not listed on the right side and vice versa. 
for example, on the task manager services, you can see there is AARSVC and it's agent activation runtime. And you can see that as a first thing that comes up here, it's not that, it's ActiveX installer and it's completely different. And you can see that I have it sorted by name so that way you can see it here in an alphabetical order. So what's the difference here? So if I go into the services of the task manager and I just look for a print spooler, right? It's called print spooler. It's not there. But why is that? Look at this. There's print notify, there's print workflow, there's another print workflow, and there are no other print things. You can see clearly that we are sorted alphabetically and there's no way we, we are missing when it comes to uh, there's no way that, that we're not finding it in here uh, unless it's just completely gone. However, if we go to this other services, which is, is the system services, and we just type in print spooler, it comes up right away. And then again, if you compare here, you can see that there are missing things. There, it's, not, it's not there. But why is that? Well, the task manager print services is print services specifically for the user that's logged into this computer. It's not system services at all. And these services do not require administrator privileges for you to start them or stop them or do whatever you want with them. This is all for the user that specifically log into this, not the administrator services. The administrator services is this one here, and that's the one you want to activate the print spooler system. And then of course you can just simply right click it and start it. You see how I was explaining to you uh, this in a specific way to make sure that you don't waste your time looking for certain things or for in this case services in the wrong place. We have two different things, completely two different things that are named exactly the same thing. That's very confusing in, in, my, in, in my point of view, especially for somebody who is new to computers. So keep that in mind. All of this stuff that's in Task Manager, it's only for the user that's logged in currently that has the privileges to do so, meaning people that don't have admin privileges. You can do whatever you want. But the system services, you need to have administrative privileges to do anything with that. All right, so if we go in here and then we click the printer that I wasn't listed, you will get normal pop-up where you can just literally add any printer, whether it's TCP, IP, local, or this and that. But the error was specific to service being stopped like this, not necessarily disabled. So in an environment where they really want you to uh, make sure, they, when they really want to make sure that the user is not allowed to print period unless specifically given the right to do so or for example it goes to higher ups and they say you can it's going to be like this it's no it won't be just stopped in this case we can just start it because we don't know why it stopped to begin with so we can just simply start it no big deal right but in a business environment where it's disabled you will go to properties for the print spooler like this and it will be like this it will be disabled permanently it will not be able to start up on, on Windows startup at all, it would just simply be disabled and they wouldn't be able to get anywhere with that. And for that, you have to be very careful whether you are allowed to um, enable it or not. In our case, it was just stopped. So all we did was just right click and start it. And by the way, you can start these services remotely. Let me show you something real quick. If we open services and we can ask Mike, uh, Mike, hey, can you give me your computer name or your computer IP address? We can open services on our computer, on our own computer, and uh, select action, connect to another computer, type in Mike's computer name, and then click OK. It's going to connect to it, and then you will basically get a same pop-up like this, and then you just go in and remotely start his service. Of course, he can try to reboot. And that might start it as well, because keep in mind, it's just stopped. It's not disabled. But if it's disabled, he can reboot a thousand times. It's not going to do anything. So now since we are, uh, since we've uh, enabled his service, we can say, hello, Mike. 
I have enabled printing on your computer. Please try again and let me know if any issues, Irvin. Okay, so we're gonna click save. Now he can try again. He can, he'll let us know if there are any issues and that should resolve it. Hopefully we hear back from him. Sometimes you don't want to necessarily leave it open-ended like this. Uh, if you know that this guy is really good at getting back to you on things, that's fine. But you can reach out to him and say, hey, can you try again right now? And if he says it's okay, then we can just go to add internal note. Printing now works fine. And then we're going to close ticket afterwards. But notice how I said enabled printing on your computer. I'm not going to tell him hey, I have enabled print spooler system on your computer. Users don't necessarily need to know any of this stuff unless they specifically ask, because sometimes they're curious, maybe know a little bit about computers, so they want to know how, how you did it, you know. Uh, but otherwise, you can just say, I've enabled printing on your computer, please try again. And then we're going to mark it as completed. All right. We have one other ticket that we're going to work in RQ. And this one is says computer crashed and it's very descriptive actually. It says here this morning my computer crashed and I smell burning plastic. Uh-oh. And then it says it appears to be working now but not sure if this needs to be looked at. So I get this comment a lot or a question I should say but it's a comment on my YouTube video specifically this one here where I was testing a bad power supply after burning smell and unexpected shutdown and this is the reason why i created this ticket because i got this idea and also i had somebody else on discord uh, share their experience as well and i'll show you some images of that but i get this question on this specific video and um, what happens is usually power supply usually capacitor kind of blows or you know something overheats within the power supply and that happens sometimes due to the uh, fact that power supply was overexerted, meaning that you, for example, added uh, more stuff to it, for example, a GPU, or you overclocked your computer or something like that. And it just wasn't capable of handling that type of draw, type of wattage draw, and things start to blow. Another reason for that is that uh, these capacitors, for example, this gentleman here shared his um, picture of his open uh, power supply these capacitors in here uh, will basically or not just the capacitors but the everything the electronics over time when they're exposed to air and just environment humidity all of this stuff they start to erode um, or corrode i should say not erode necessarily corrode uh, and these capacitors can start to blow which is the most common thing capacitors are kind of like batteries they hold a charge in them and if they can't hold charge properly uh, over time because of the corrosion or, or whatever else there might be a reason, uh, they will start to bulge and they would uh, start to leak. The example we're looking at here from this gentleman's, um, or these are perfectly fine capacitors. What you see, the white stuff here, this goop, the goopy stuff, that's normal. That's just um, adhesive. It's glue that's used for capacitors. Capacitors. Uh, they use this glue around the capacitors and underneath them to prevent them from um, moving, uh, from expansion, from basically uh, disconnecting. Because, you know, they are, uh, when you put something under that much, when you put something under the voltage and stuff like that, it tends to move, heat, and expand. They don't want, they want to make sure they don't disconnect from the circuit board. That's the way I understand it. I'm not um, electrical engineer in any ways, but I know some of the basic stuff. These are perfectly normal capacitors. You can see they're not bulging, but you usually see bulging is on top of the capacitor and they would bulge out. They would also bulge down too, uh, but this, it would bulge up and it would basically be like sort of like an X over here. And of course, if they start to leak, they would leak from the top. There would be a leak on the top, be like a, usually like a circle of it. Anyways, these are normal, normal capacitors. His issue was um, not power supply necessarily but if you do get a power supply that 
that it smells from it smells like burning plastic look at the you can if you feel okay with this you can open it up and and see um see if there are any obvious issues but generally speaking if you smell something burning you want to usually replace the power supply in this case it's actually very interesting he had a wire that was actually burning up maybe it's some kind of a short or something is just bad wiring it to me it looks like just bad wiring um, that was done here some kind of a rigged thing that was burning and causing issues and in the end he just basically decided to see this is how he had it he was wondering if he should just you know try to solder it or or, or whatnot uh, but in the end he just decided to get a you know replacement power supply although it's cheap i usually recommend the name brands but in his case this is what he can get and i said in the end well might as well it will be safer than trying to solder you some kind of electrical tape like this or anything like that so going back to our take it in this case it's most likely just bad power supply we would have it replaced and then i'm going to reply to customer and say if i am help desk uh, but if i am desktop support locally or you know just a tech guy i would look at it and myself i would you know take it and look at it and see if the power supply is bad and replace it otherwise i would say um, well you know i would talk to them you know hello it sounds like you have a bad power supply please take your computer to local pc tech to take a look now i'm only saying this because i don't know the exact situation of this person they might be working from home or right not so i you know i gotta give them an option uh, but otherwise i would look at it myself and replace it replace the power supply or if it's under warranty i would contact the vendor and have them come out and have it have them replace the power supply you know if it's a computer under warranty uh, this is what usually happens you just call them and they do it you know it's really easy to replace a power supply your computer may still work even if it blows up something and that's the point of my video here is that what happens is the power supply that i'm testing here is actually this so it's the same thing that happened but it actually still works so i am testing it to check the voltage and it's been two years since i made this but i'm pretty sure i actually found that some of the voltage is not right on some of those pins and that's exactly what happens you still may have a working power supply even if a capacitor goes bad or something like that but you may be getting wrong voltage uh, wrong voltage to the motherboard or any of your computer components which can cause even more damage so this is why it's better to might as well just go ahead and just get a replacement power supply even if it's just something you know fairly cheap like this no name um, you know that's better than trying to risk it and cause more damage to your computer all right guys i hope you like this video please let me know if you have any more suggestions when it comes to computer uh, fixing ideas or issues that you want me to resolve and uh yeah i think that's it please take a moment to like and uh yeah i'll see you next time you have a wonderful day bye bye